What's up? Oh my gosh, it's been a while. Cheers. Cheers to being back. Ask Lively and TV Q and A. Back at ya. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to. I was gonna say another episode because it's been so long since we've done one. But the show that you guys have asked for is back. Making a fresh start with the hashtag, which means we're accepting new questions. So if you have some burning desire to know something that's fitness related or just whatever, we like them even if they're not fitness related, ask us a question using hashtag AskLiveLeanTV. And you can put it anywhere on our social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, yep. anywhere. Yeah. So today we're going to take all the questions from our at Lively TV. No, actually, this is from my app, Brad Guthrie on Instagram. Um, but yeah, the best way to probably get a hold of us is at Lively TV. So um, if you guys are new to this show, this is the show where you post questions and we answer them. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we're going to say who asked the question and then we'll do our best to give you. A short answer. I feel like we're a little rusty. I know. Because we haven't, we haven't done this in so long. Um, so you can watch this on YouTube if you're watching. Shout out to all the YouTubers. Um, but you can also listen to this on our Live Lean TV podcast. Now, I feel like I want to I get more people over onto our podcast. So I think we're going to hold off on one question at the end. And we're going to answer that exclusively for our podcast listeners. So if you okay. want to get every single question answered, go listen over on the podcast. All right. So let's jump into it. First question here from Instagram is from Kathleen E. Walters. She asks, how do you keep your relationship thriving with two young ones and busy careers? I'll <laughs> I let you answer question. this one. Yeah, this is actually the first Q&A we've done since we had our second baby. And a part of that is because we needed to take some time to just focus on that. Um, we also moved to, to a different city and into a house and a lot, a lot has been going on. So, um, yeah, basically we do prioritize our family first, uh, of course, but we, our relationship is just as important to us as anything else. So we make sure that we're always okay. And that, you know, if we have an argument or, or disagreement, we talk about it. And then, um, how we manage our busy career is just basically to, squeeze it in whenever time does allow, which is not your standard nine to five. Yeah, but like let's, it, let's yeah. be real. We make our career a priority too. Yeah. Without a career, know, we can't feed our family. We prioritize all three of those things. Yeah. Like our family, our relationship, and our career. Exactly. Like they're all so important to us. And I'll be completely honest. It's tough working mm -hmm. with your significant other. Um, it's tough working from home. It's tough working with two kids running around or one mm -hmm. kid running around and the other one kind of crying. And But Cody's been super chill. When, yeah, when we compare great. both kids, Cody's been super chill compared hey, to Kyle. Don't Kyla. say anything about No, I'm not. I'm saying they're all got their own little personality. Um, so just all I got to say is like if you're looking at us through social media or on our videos and we're always happy and lovey-dovey and everything, like there's some downsides to doing this as well. Yeah, so, I mean we obviously don't record when we're arguing and we don't post when we're mad at each other. But, you know, we post the happy times like everyone does. No, but Social media is a highlight reel. Well, we try to keep it real, too. Like, if you yeah. saw my last Instagram post, I did an Instagram that post. That was a little TMI. That was a lot of TMI. So I like to try it to keep it real. It wasn't about us. It was about his uh, inner working. <laughs> you have to go watch yeah. or look at that. <laughs> um, so I, I guess what I'm trying to get across is um, we're trying to keep everything in balance. Um, career is important. Obviously, our relationship is important. Obviously, our children are super important. Um, but you can't just let one thing fall and focus on the other thing because they all feed one another. Right. When we're exactly. not happy in one area of our life, we're not going to be happy in all areas of our life. So it's about constant learning, constant balance. And yeah, if the, I could give you one piece of advice, it would be to not aim for perfection right. because you're not going to have the perfect relationship with your spouse. I mean, there's going to be some tension sometimes it's normal. And then, you know, your family life, your work life and none of those things are ever going to be perfect, but you do the best you can to make them great, you know? Mm -hmm. So forget perfection. I think that's where a lot of people um, trip up is they want it to be perfect. And then when it's not, they just like give up and just like quit or something. Yeah. But never, never quitting, never giving up on the things that are important to you and just making it the best that you can. This is why I always go do this to Hollywood romance, rom-com movies. It's because not like real. they're like perfect. Yeah. <laughs> right. it's, yeah okay. Season. So cheers to you for okay. being on this journey with me. Yeah. Because it's a journey, people. It's what? Shout out to those Lively Nation mugs, by the way. Ooh, hot mug. Link, link below to get some <laughs> Lively merch. All right. Next question you want to ask right sure. here? Sure. Uh, from Carolyn. 
says, I currently have 45% of my macros coming from protein. Is that too much? I'm seeing results, but I'm concerned about kidney damage. I consume 1,800 calories per day, so protein is roughly 200 grams. Okay, so up front, we're not doctors. <laughs> so yeah. if you're concerned that it's going to be kidney damage, speak to your doctor. You but could have your kidneys tested. From me looking from the outside in, I think in order, people are so obsessed over hurting their kidneys from eating protein. Yeah. Yet society, the um, standard American diet, we're shoving sugar down our throats like over like crazy and no one's concerned over that or they're concerned about it but oh if I eat too much protein it's going to be even worse. Guys. I just yeah I think at the end of the day it comes down to like what else are you going to eat like you know what I mean your calories have to come from something so I'd rather have you be like too heavy on the protein than too heavy on the carbs and sugar right it's because it's like you got to eat something yeah so and I I prefer to have a better balance though 45 percent is kind of a lot that's like almost half of your calories there so I would take it down just a little bit to 40 or 30 percent but but some people like the worst but some people have 60 70 percent of their calories coming from carbohydrates which right exactly what is your body 80 percent yeah so what is your body doing that so from from my opinion 45 percent is high but I'm not like freaking out over it that it's going to have kidney damage no but I also don't know that you need that much protein so it may just be like a little more than your body needs but it's I don't think it's hurtful but I'd rather you be high on protein than being too high on the wrong types of carbohydrates right exactly so um I would say for people if you're struggling getting enough protein I would say just try to aim to just get that generic one pound per lean body mass for protein. Mm-hmm. Um, so it sounds like you're which pu- usually comes out to you're very not well there. That much of a percentage. Yeah, yeah but. And, and a lot of people underestimate how much protein they're getting, like based on serving sizes. Like there's decent amount of protein. A lot of um, the meats that we talk about, people should be eating. Um, so yeah, we'll just we'll, we'll leave it at that. But I think you're doing fine. But if you have a concern, speak to your doctor. I don't think you should have concern about kidney damage unless yeah. you've noticed some symptoms. And if you're getting good results and you're healthy, keep it up. Yeah. All right, next question is... Okay, from Soma Sora. Soma Sora, yeah. Are you at all concerned about pre-workout supplements? A lot of them have quite a bit of caffeine from coffee and green tea and a bunch of other ingredients that help supposedly with focus energy recovery. I use one here and there by Earth Nature right now, but I wonder sometimes if that's overkill. How do you decide... Oh, happy you decided to do the Q&A mm-hmm. again. Okay, good. So are we concerned about pre-workouts? Well, I'm not concerned about pre-workouts because like I know what I'm doing. And, um, and you're not overusing them. That's just, that's that was going to be my point. Is yeah. <laughs> if you live because you have to take a pre-workout to have enough energy to get out of bed, then it's a concern. If you, and if you need it for every workout, like you need it. And then if you decide to stop for one day and you're just having a ringing headache and you can't get on with your day and you're very lax, like I'll be 100% honest. If you're back, dependent. Back in 2000, I think it was 2009 or so, when I first started dabbling into supplements, um, I started taking like, there was like this thermogenic supplement that had a lot of caffeine in it and I took it for 30 days and then I stopped taking it. And I just noticed like I was dragging ass. Like Crash. my yeah. energy, I couldn't get and I was having headaches and withdrawals and everything. So yes, you can definitely overdo it on pre-workouts, but if you just take like a scoop before your workout and that's it, in my opinion, you're good. Yeah, definitely. And I, yeah, I don't think that they should be used on a like I need it type of basis. Like if you can't find the energy to work out, it's usually because you haven't gone through the motivation exercises like we're always talking about like finding your why and really thinking hard about the reasons you want to get fit because once you have that reason and it's like ingrained in you like the reason you want to work out and the reason you want to be a fit healthy person then you don't need like I don't don't know I feel like nobody really needs a pre-workout they're just fun to have and it should be used as a like nice to have instead of like a necessity yeah I never think that like a pre-workout should be on anyone's list of must-haves it should just be like a a fun thing yeah you know once in a while because it it is fun it's like you take a pre-workout and you just feel like on top of the world exactly you want to lift everything and you feel laser focused it's a cool feeling I'm Mm pro-caffeine for sure definitely like coffee as well like it doesn't have to be a pre-workout powder like having a coffee before get you zoned in focused in like yeah not many supplements work for me caffeine 
in pre-workout supplements work for me. That's something yeah. that I've they're tried and tested with me. So that's why yeah. I take it. Cause but you also don't feel like you need I don't coffee need it. either. Like it's nice to be able to not have coffee sometimes and still be fine yeah. without it. So. I actually took, what was it, six weeks or eight yeah. weeks off of coffee for a while. Yeah, I think it's fine. like two months. Yeah. You didn't even have one coffee. So it's nice to like... Uh, reset yourself every once in a while. Like if you do find right. yourself addicted to pre-workouts or addicted to coffee, it's like just take a little hiatus. And it's hard at first. Like sometimes you go through withdrawals, headaches, so all of that. But you need to reset your system and be yeah. able to rely on your own energy systems to get yeah, you to work out. Exactly. All right, next question. I think we're getting to the flow of it now. I know, but these aren't short answers. No, so yeah. <laughs> we got to like keep it concise. Let's okay. Keep moving. Next question on Instagram from Ms. Jenny D. Lane. Where did you guys get your nutrition training? I want to take an actual course to help my patients. Also, just a thankful moment to Jessica Aww. and Formula X. I'm on week two and seeing so much progress already. You guys are really... You guys really are who I want to go. Uh, you guys really are who I go to for fitness workouts because they work. Also, I love how short it is. Yay! That's so great. I just love to hear that you're loving the program. That's so so very cool. Um, so, all right, let's go to the nutrition training piece. This is something I feel really passionate about because. Um, of my own personal like life experience in doing that and I we were just talking about this this morning like I feel like real life hands-on experience mm. is by far like gonna teach you way more than anything you learn in school like I've been to school for personal training and for nutrition all of it I feel like I learned like five percent of my knowledge yeah. in, in actual school and the other 95 yeah. percent by working with clients let me give a little story here like I had my nu nutrition certifications through uh, CanFit Pro now, before we even started the course, the instructor got up there and she said, I have to put this out there. Before we get into this, you guys may already know more than what we're going to teach you. You may disagree with a lot of things that are standard in this course, but just go with it. If you, if you want to pass the course, you're going to have to, um, when you opinions. take the test, forget your opinions and just apply what you're learning through the textbook. So um, just like you said, when it comes to... Some of it's outdated. The information super in the outdated, curriculum. super outdated. So, but 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 you need the certifications yeah. um, to take on. I mean, you don't need them, but it's clients may ask you what are your certifications. So right. when you have them, clients will feel better. You work with them. And but if you're trying to get a job, sometimes you need exactly. It. Yeah. But ultimately, the biggest thing is can what you're teaching people can they understand it? Can they apply it? Can you make it a part of an overall lifestyle for them? And totally. does it get them results? Now, right. that's what we figured out. We've applied it to ourselves. We've applied it to hundreds and thousands of clients that we've worked with. Right. And the stuff that we talk about works. Mm -hmm. So that's the main thing. But um, if you feel like you need to get a nutrition certification to kind of give you that um, like what's the word I'm looking for? Credential. The, the credentials, the yeah. credibility to take on clients, and I highly recommend you do it. Definitely. But just don't feel like you're going to take a course and you're going to be like the world's smartest person in nutrition because, guys, it's more about the hands-on knowledge that you're going to learn along your way. Yeah, and actually applying it to your own body and seeing oh. and feeling the results is even more, I think, important than seeing your clients go through it. Like you really need to test different things on yourself. It's like theory is nothing without actual experience. But so what you work, need to experience Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but what works for you doesn't work necessarily work for everybody. Right. So once again, working with many different clients with many different backgrounds, seeing what works for some, seeing what works right, for others. Right. Right, right, right. So yeah. it's so true because it's so like nutrition is it's not just food. It's also about your psyche. It's about your lifestyle. Totes. I mean, there's so many things that go into nutrition that aren't even related to the food itself. It's like more like emotional, mental yeah. aspects. So but yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. Like to get that credential is a good start. But then you really just need to start experimenting and applying on yourself and on clients. And even taking clients for free in the beginning is a really good way to learn. Um, if you feel like you have a hard time getting clients or something, just offer your services for free to people and just help out yeah. your friends and your family and just see what happens and b grow from there. Yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it with this. Being textbook smart and actually knowing how to teach people... Street smart. <laughs> ...is two different things. I'll yeah. just leave it at that. Okay, what's next? So Anna... Carol Ann says, what are your thoughts on carb backloading for experienced lifters slash gym junkies? Yeah. Um, so carb backloading, yeah. should we explain what that is? Well, carb backloading is basically not eating carbs earlier in the day and eating them later at night. So exactly. I'm all for this, actually. Like If you follow a lot of my nutrition principles, my mornings and early times are focused on healthy protein and healthy yeah. fat. 
and then I focus my carb intake around the workouts. So after the workouts mainly. So if you work right. out at night and through the day, um, I would focus on the protein and healthy fats, lots of vegetables. And then at night, that's when you would get in more of your starchy carbs after your workout so your body can actually replenish and grow and, and um, fill in that glycogen. Yeah, I feel like this makes a lot of sense for people who are afternoon or evening lifters. Yeah. But if you are like doing your workout first thing in the morning, like jumping out of bed and going straight to the gym and not having carbs at all until the evening, then I feel like it it's, could cause a little bit of issue because yeah. you're probably going to crash after your workout without replenishing those carbs. So, you know, it kind of depends on when you're working out, yeah, but I, yeah, I feel like it makes sense if you're working out later. That's what I say. Like, is carb backloading good? Yes, it is. But I would say what's more important is Fueling around fuel your it workout. around your yeah. workouts, mm -hmm. wh wherever that happens. Yeah. Next question is um, Maritz Lifestyle says, which one could be the best program for a woman 55 years old? I just do exercises, but I fall the wag I fall off the wagon for a year, gain some weight, and don't know how to get back or how to start again. So which of your programs would be best for her? Okay, um, yeah, I really think the best, and this is not just based on your age, I mean, for all ages of women, I would say do formula for women because this is one, my body transformation program and it's designed to teach you how to live lean in an ongoing way. I mean, Formula X is a great one too, but it's more of like a quick fix, like six weeks to lose fat kind of a thing. Formula for women is a longer program and you have three different phases over three months and it teach and it kind of like restructures your body recomposes your body so it, you're burning fat but you're also building lean muscle that's going to help you stay lean longer so i'd say probably your problem maritza is um the reason you're kind of yo-yoing back and forth is maybe you haven't gone through like a muscle building phase to really help recompose your body so you're just getting skinnier but then it's hard to keep the weight off right? well i look into this like once again this is why we I, I would love to turn this ask show into a q a show where we actually call you on the phone and talk because there's <laughs> you just want more details there's not her? enough context behind yeah. this question but from my understanding of this is is she's not following a program she's mm -hmm. just doing whatever exercise she feels like and then she gets bored and she falls off the wagon so that's the importance of being on a program is when you get a living program we schedule everything for you we tell you exactly Exactly what to do on this day on that day we show you the exercises in video format we take you through everything we give you a nutrition plan as well so my answer to that question would be we created a, a live lean body quiz so we get this question all the time what's the best program for me because we have so many programs mm -hmm. we've created a quiz it's a quick quiz you go in and you can find the best program for you based on your goal based on your fitness level and based on access to equipment. Take that quick quiz and it'll pump out the program that's best for you. So I would say go check out that quiz. Yeah, so depending on if you train at home or at the gym, you're gonna get a different answer. Um, but definitely I would suggest for you a program that at least focuses on building strength instead of just on fat loss only, because I think you really need to take a step back. If your goal is weight loss, that's fine, but I do think you need to go through strength training first. Yeah. So you can rev up your metabolism to help you keep the weight off longer like forever you know and i think that's what one thing a lot of women are missing yeah. especially older women i feel like they're uh, more timid to train to like strength train and to use heavier weights and to actually put muscle on their body so don't be scared i mean 55 is still really young to be honest don't be scared. It's really <laughs> you are still young and vibrant and everything and i really encourage you to do strength training okay so let's do three more questions next one is from carol T13 says, which supplements, if any, do you think are necessary to take on daily or cycl or on a cyclical basis? basis? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I like how you put if any, because yeah. I, I really feel like supplements are optional and they are intended to be supplemental on top of your fantastic diet that you have. So you definitely want to make sure that you square away all your nutrient needs from your diet first. And then when your diet is you know, the right types of foods and the right amounts and you get in a really good flow with your diet, then you can start asking yourself the question like, what do I want to see change or what do I want more of right. or stuff like that. And that can help you make the decision whether to add any supplements or not. And yeah, you can take some supplements um, just on a temporary or like cyclical basis, like you said, um, or you can decide which ones you want permanently in your yeah. diet. Like I have been taking whey protein for 
De- over a decade and to me I consider that like a permanent one that just stays in my diet because it's supplementing a lack of protein in your diet right. mm-hmm. so once again this is another one of those questions where, where if I called you or you called us and we we're talking to you specifically on the phone like how are you eating? my first question would be yeah. well what is your goal why do you feel like you mm-hmm. need supplements do you feel like you're lagging anywhere what's your diet like is anything once missing? we yeah. get that context then we can say oh if you're not eating enough of this then you're probably deficient in this right that's where we can kind of get into it with with you so first you have to know what your goals are and and, um, and then you fill that if in with, with, with a supplement. Yeah. So for mm-hmm. instance, a lot of people, like we said earlier, are deficient in protein. That's where a protein powder can come in handy for most people. A lot of people are deficient in omega-3s. So that's where a fish oil or a krill oil can come in to help some people. Mm-hmm. Some people want that little spike in energy before their workout. That's when a pre-workout or caffeine right. can come into play. So there's a lot of things there. I would say, just like you said, nothing is necessity but a supplement is to supplement your diet where you have deficiencies. So mm-hmm. figure out what that is. So if, if you want more specific answers, I would ask another question to us and we can kind of make some recommendations there. Mm-hmm. So Bonnie Buccina says, how often is too often to enjoy <laughs> a glass of wine or a beer? Hmm. <laughs> well, once again, what I would say is like, what stage are you in your journey? So we're in maintenance mode right now. So yeah. we're a little bit more... Um, what's the word? Lackadaisical or a little more I don't know. That open. I just think, yeah, there's like a little bit more room for treats when you're have, not um, going after like a specific fat exactly. loss goal or something. Like when but I when I was you don't want to go backwards either. So when, I was, kind of when I was when I was trying to dial in my journey, yeah. like I didn't drink. I maybe you went zero alcohol. When, no, right? No, like I'd still go out on the I weekends. Did. I'd go out on the weekends, but I would not get to the point where I was hungover. Like I'd have a few drinks. Um, I had phases I'd go for like six or even more. I think maybe the, my longest I went was 12 weeks at a time, just dry. No, yeah. no drinks at all. If I went out with friends, I would have, uh, you know, sparkling water, soda water, or just plain water with lemon. And I was so like strict on it. Like I did yeah. not have one drop of alcohol during that time I was training, but I was training for a show. And for me, it Which was is like, different. yeah, it was really, um, I was like fiercely motivated. And I think Bonnie yeah. has sent us in her before and after photos, right? Like yeah, she's been yeah. through a few of our programs. And if I remember correctly, like you are in amazing shape right yeah. now. No, Bonnie's so you're really lean. And you're yeah, probably you're in, in, maintenance in mode, that sure. maintenance mode. Yeah. So I would say enjoy a glass of wine here and there. Like maybe, I mean, some, there's some times where we'll have what, I mean, me anyway. You, you, do, you definitely were pregnant. drink more than me. Yeah, I've like, been pregnant and breastfeeding for like many years now, so it's I wouldn't say for me. I wouldn't say I have a drink every night, but maybe like four to five times a week I'll have a drink. And yeah, I just exactly. I think o- you can get away with like maybe five drinks a week or so. I just got over a nasty yeah. hangover <laughs> from oh. tequila, so like I haven't been drinking for Guys, a while you now. <laughs> so much tequila that night. It oh, the good tequila. Ago. But anyway, like to give you a, a really cut and clear answer on this. I teach this in my Live Lean Way course as well. So if you've been through that, you probably already know what I'm going to say. But basically the answer comes down to how is it affecting you? If you have three or four drinks a week and you don't like the results you see after that, then you may be cutting back. Maybe consider cutting back a little bit because everyone's body is going to um, take alcohol a little bit differently. For some people, um, you know, just a few drinks will be problematic. And for others, they can have like 10 drinks and have no issue with it. So I just think you really need to watch your results and judge your um, or like, quantify your amount of alcohol based on what's happening to your body and your life too because let's be real alcohol isn't just about the calories of that drink yeah it's about how it affects your food decisions how it affects your next morning like how was your day (laughs) Uh, on last sunday he was like wrecked for like a whole day so if that's what's happening to you every week i would say that that doesn't happen very often for me no no oh my god for you it's like yeah. Once every two years. Okay, last question. <laughs> let's jump. Let's finish it off here. Um, who let or from Claire Watling says who let Brad Guthrie make a feature wall out of his trainers <laughs> in the background? <laughs> who let that happen? So if you guys are long <laughs> time, <laughs> if you guys are long time Ask the Lean TV viewers, um, you see we have a new set here. This is my man cave, my office. Um, so one of the things I want to do, I'm a sneaker collector. I'm a sneaker head. I love sneakers. Like what you see up here, most of these I've never wore before because I actually collect them. Sometimes I will sell them. Um, like these are my Air Jordan Fresh Prince edition shoes. I've never wore them before. I'm a huge Will Smith fan, as you know. I love Jordan. So the combo is like I got to have. So it's just, it's just a hobby of mine. I collect sneakers. I love wearing sneakers. Um, so I want to show off my prized 
possessions up here. And to give you guys one piece of relationship advice, it's just to let your spouse do what they want to do. Because (laughs) seriously, I really feel like that's one of our keys to like keeping each other happy is if he really wants something. And even if I think it's like, I don't know, silly or whatever, I'm just like, yeah, babe, like it looks great. Like do what you want to do because I know how it makes him so happy. So like, would I have a sneaker wall if this was just my house? No. But would, would I have a makeup wall? No. <laughs> I don't have a makeup wall. I just have like a makeup <laughs> a collection. A lot of makeup. But yeah, we all like have we, our thing. I don't, we let I, each other do what each other wants to I do. I don't collect watches. I don't collect expensive cars. I exactly. think this is a pretty inexpensive collection that I like to have. So. And it makes you so happy, which yeah. I love. Yeah, you, so I guess I'm the one who let that happen, but there's a specific <laughs> reason why, and look at the smile. That's All right, fun. guys, that's it for the first return episode of Ask Live Lean TV. So keep those questions coming in. Tag us at Live Lean TV on any of our social medias and use the hashtag Ask Live Lean TV. That way we can find your question, we can answer them here on the show. And all of the stuff that we talked about in this episode, if we talked about something that has a link, we'll put the link in the video description below. So go check out the programs that we talked about, the Live Lean Quiz, Live Lean Way, a few of the things that we talked about. We'll put the merch link down there. We got t-shirts, stickers, coffee mugs, all that kind of stuff. So go enjoy, become a part of the Live Lean Nation and let's live lean together, people. Yeah, thank you so much for your questions. We love doing the show and engaging with you guys. So keep them coming. All right, we'll guys. see you next time. Thanks for watching. Live and lean. Live and lean. Boy.